क्या हुआ बे अबे रॉकेट गाय बने हुए हो ग्रेजुएशन के लिए सिर्फ चार महीने बचे और समझ नहीं आ रहा आगे क्या करूं शुरू कहां से करूं अबे इंटर्नशाला ट्रेनिंग से मैं बताता हूं यहां है मशीन लर्निंग जावा एचआर टेली जैसे बहुत सारे करियर बिल्डिंग ट्रेनिंग्स ट्रेनिंग सेलेक्ट कर और अपना करियर शुरू कर इंटर्नशाला ट्रेनिंग शुरुआत यहीं से हेलो एंड गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन आई एम योर होस्ट मनप्रीत वेलकम टू द फिफ्थ सीजन ऑफ आई एस टी प्रैक्टिकल्स बाई इंटर्नशाला ट्रेनिंग आई एस टी प्रैक्टिकल्स इज अ सीरीज ऑफ प्री ऑनलाइन मास्टर क्लासेस डिलीवर्ड बाई इंडस्ट्री एक्सपर्ट्स दीज फोर्टी फाइव मिनट सेशन आर ऑल अबाउट टीचिंग स्टूडेंट्स इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट सॉफ्टवेयर एंड टूल्स एवरी आई एस टी प्रैक्टिकल इज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू एक्सपीरियंस द पावर ऑफ प्रैक्टिकल लर्निंग द टॉपिक ऑफ टूडे सेशन is ar vr technologies and the metaverse and our teacher today is ashray he is an xr developer at immersive insiders where he does research and development of xr experiences apart from that he writes blogs and teaches students the fundamental concepts of creating ar vr experiences using unity engine and c sharp scripting i hope you will enjoy this webinar with him we have a very special gift for you at the end so stay tuned for that तो चलिए करते हैं ए आर वी आर की इस मास्टर क्लास की शुरुआत यहीं से एंड लेट्स वेलकम आश्रय हेलो हाय गाइस हाउ यू गाइस डूइंग आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेल एंड लेट्स बिगिन नाउ बिफोर वी स्टार्ट आई जस्ट वांट टू नो हाउ मच नॉलेज यू हैव ऑन ए आर वी आर सो लेट्स सी हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू नो व्हाट ए आर वी आर इज सो इफ यू नो व्हाट इट इज जस्ट गिव मी यस इफ यू डोंट नो व्हाट इट इज यू कैन कॉमेंट नो This will kind of give me an idea of how many of you here know what it is and how many of you know, don't know what it is. Okay. Okay. So I think majority of us here don't know what it is. All right. Then the next question for you guys is: How many of you know what metaverse is? Okay. uh not actually like metaverse is not exactly facebook but you'll get to know what it is by the end of this uh, webinar all right so let's start by seeing what ar is so ar stands for augmented reality now basically it's a technology uh, that lets developers superimpose digital content and uh, like images sounds and text over real world environment so it's like you take some real world uh, examples like you have your camera device right so you have your ar phone you have a phone and from that you are getting the live feed of the camera and then we have some digital content like say some images or text you want and then you just superimpose them one on other so that is what ar is so you have your uh, real time feed and you have like the digital content superimposed on one another so the best example that i can give you here is that most of us have tried is pokemon go i'm pretty sure all of you have tried it and uh, yeah so here uh, i hope my audio is better now uh, i can see that it's low all right uh, so the best example is pokemon go so you might have seen it so it's basically like uh, you have your environment and when you open the ar mode you can see the pokemon right in front of you and then you can catch it so that is one of them and the second best example is like trending right now is like the real estate industry and home industry so basically uh, big companies like ikea uh, they have started selling their furnitures through ar as well so you can select your chair or table or any furniture of your choice and then you can uh, scan your room and place it exactly at that location you can change its color you can change its size and see whether it matches your room or no and then you can decide whether you want to buy it or no so that that's the advantage of having ar technology and there's another advantage and that is that it does not require like external tracking or something it just uh, is it just a small smartphone is enough it does not require any ad hoc variables or extra utilities now almost all of us have smartphones and not all the smartphones are capable of uh, uh, experiencing ar like uh, some of the lower end smartphones do not have that capability but majority of them do have it 
So earlier it used to be like you need to have a smartphone with uh, something that it supports the AR code. That's the AR software that's there. But nowadays what is happening is there is something called as WebXR as well. So it's like you have a website and uh, you just go there. You can enable permissions for your camera and then you can scan your environment and start placing AR objects. So this happens simultaneously. You're right. So that was that's the next thing that I was coming up to. So lens card. So that is another super example of having AR technology. It's like uh, for those of you who don't know what lens card is, it's a uh, uh, specs companies and they sell sunglasses and they uh, prescribe lenses all these things so you can try out the frames on your face you can move around it moves along with you so that is what ar is now before uh, we move on to the next one uh, how many of you know what the difference between ar and mr is like do you know what it is like do you know what the difference is do you think it is the same or do you feel mixed reality is something completely different and it's not related to ar at all Yeah, Snapchat filters too. That's that's right. So that's also AR as well. Cool. So uh, AR and MR is not really different. Like it's just like more of like an extension. So AR is like where you place your digital content on top of the world, and mixed reality is when that digital content blends with your physical world. So here you can see that we have some alien object, and that is kind of blocking the furniture that's there behind. And here on the right side, that's mixed reality, wherein the uh, digital content or the uh, alien device, alien thing that's there, it's behind the uh, furniture. So it's kind of blending in. So this is just one example of mixed reality. The other one would be something like, say, suppose you have an augmented reality app, wherein you are able to shoot some, say, shoot a ball somewhere. So generally what ha would happen is you will be able to see your environment, you shoot a ball, it just keeps going, going, going till it becomes smaller and smaller. Whereas in mixed reality, suppose you shoot a ball and there's a tree in front of you, it will interact with the tree. It'll, although it's a digital content, it will interact with the tree and it will come back. So basically it involves something like depth perception and it kinds of, kind of knows where object is there in your environment. All right. So we'll have a quick quiz before we can proceed. Okay, so the first question for you guys is, which of the following is true with respect to AR? Option A, it provides complete immersion. Option B, it requires a projector to see the augmented uh, contents. Option C, it requires external tracking devices to detect position and rotation device. And option D, none of this. So which do you think is the right answer? You can comment your answers below here. Okay. C, D. Most of you are seeing C that it requires, um, uh, it requires external tracking to detect position and rotation. I don't think so. That's because the correct answer is D. So you can see the reason is that for AR, it's not complete immersion because you can see your physical environment. It does. Uh, it says it requires a projector. It does not. All you need is a small phone. It says it requires external tracking devices to detect position and rotation. It does not. So it does not require any external devices for it to track. All right. No problem. If you got this wrong, we have one more question for you. So is it possible to augment 3D objects behind real world? There's just option A and B, so, or maybe I'm seeing it slowly. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, all right. That's correct. It is possible to augment 3D objects behind real world. It's called as uh, occlusion, actually. All right. So moving on to the next slide, we'll see what VR is. So basically VR is like an entirely simulated artificial uh, digital experience. So it's like everything is computer generated. So once you wear your headset, you're there inside a 3D environment and you cannot see your physical world. You're completely disconnected from it. So uh, virtual reality technology, it kind of has a 
what can we say it's like it has the power to deliver experiences that you cannot normally experience right in 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 real world say suppose you want to experience how it feels like to be a superman or or like a spider man or you want to know how 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 it feels to fly and those kind of experiences is not practically possible in real world but in virtual reality you can simulate it and uh, so what virtual reality does is it basically makes you feel like you are mentally mentally and physically there but you are actually not now this tech needs external tracking devices and software that uh, that can track the input so for example here uh, for my vr we have the oculus controllers here so now to track this controller the headset needs to have some kind of a device which can see where the controller is and map it exactly so for, uh, like i'll repeat myself again so for ar you do not need any external devices and for vr you do so that, because you need to track different kind of inputs that are there now Facebook latest they have released hand tracking as well so with the same software that they had initially you'll be able to track your hands you don't need these controllers anymore uh, that's really cool actually so for vr technology what all devices do we have right now so we have the quest we have htc vive we have index we have pico and and there are many other companies that are building vr tech so it, it, it's really really growing and it's growing really fast then next part is what are the uses of vr like we can use vr for socialization you can use it for training and games and the biggest advantage of this is that uh, it is very very cost effective when we talk about training so if you think about it right now the uh, us military they're kind of using vr to train their soldiers and even the uh, us um, air force also because for them to fly the jets in practically it's a huge cost they spend a lot of money to train them now vr technology is getting so advanced that you wear your headset and you're inside a simulator you actually feel as if you're in the aircraft but it's just a simulator so you're saving a lot by saving fuel and all the training uh, expenditure and those kind of things all right <clears throat> let's have a quick quiz for this one as well. There we go. Yeah. So uh, Oculus Quest can be considered as a. If if for those of you who don't know what Oculus Quest is, it's basically a VR headset. I'm I'm re I'm really sure everybody knows it, but anyway. So Oculus Quest can be considered as a heads-up display, augmented reality display, head-mounted display, a small computer. So you can choose more than one answer so i'd like to see what you're going to choose see yeah that's right and one more there is one more <laughs> c and d yes yeah, c a and c heads up display no it's actually c and d so these are the correct answer it's not a heads up display uh, it's not an augmented reality display, it's a head mounted display wherein you're wearing it uh, across your head. And it's also a small computer because it needs to have the processing power to generate and, uh, you know, the, and render these uh, 3D experiences that you have. All right, moving on to the next question. Which of the following can be used as an input to virtual reality? Can you use keyboard, eyes, game pads, mouse or controller? So which of them are used as input devices. We already know one controller, so I'm gonna check that. Can we use keyboard? All of them, okay. E, yeah, controllers is right. What about keyboard? Do you think keyboard, can we use as an input device for virtual reality? Yes, of course we can because uh, say suppose your virtual reality application is something like multitasking wherein you have like three, four, you're wearing your headset and you have like three, four screens you want to multitask. So in such cases, you can connect your keyboard and you can connect your mouse as well and use that as an input. Can we use eyes? Yes, we can. Right now, Facebook is coming up with a new headset called Project Tranvia and uh, over there, they're able to track your eyes and Tell exactly what you're looking at. Can we use game pads? Yes, we can use this one as well. So those of you who said all, you're right. So all of them can be used as an input device for Quest. 
all right so going back to our presentation then in the next section let us see what metaverse is so metaverse is like a highly interactive three-dimensional virtual world okay it's exactly like the real world we are in but it's virtual that's how you can think of it in so in real world you're, you'll be able to buy lands you can buy buildings you can buy assets right like you you can go to a shop and buy some painting and you can go to a clothes store buy some clothes for yourself you can do all these things virtually as well inside that universe so that is what virtual uh, that's what me metaverse is so it's like in a metaverse, you and your friends and all the people who are connected to that metaverse can go inside and buy themselves some land and you can buy yourself clothes, you can buy digital assets, that's NFTs that they call. And, and those things belong to you and nobody else. So that is what uh, metaverse is. So And then we have something called as avatars. So avatars are nothing but the replicas of us, like us, the users. Who, who can do exactly the same thing that you do as a human. That's what a metaverse is all about, you know. And the coolest part about it is there's so much things that you can do. Right now, there is one uh, metaverse that's going on uh, wherein you can buy a land, you can build any building of your choice. It could be a theater or something. And then people can come inside the theater, watch a movie and pay some money for it. And you you get to earn from that. So yeah, that, that's what a metaverse is. All right, so we know what a metaverse is, right? And not many of us know what goes into it. Like not all of us know how a metaverse is built up from scratch. So that's exactly what we are gonna see right now. We are gonna see the anatomy of metaverse, like how it is built up from its base. So at the base, we have the infrastructure and the most infrastructure, uh, like the most important infrastructure that we need is network and hardware. Now, without these two infrastructure, you cannot build a metaverse because you need to have a network infrastructure that's able to transfer high bandwidth decentralized data in real time. Like it has to be very fast. And if there is some latency and lag, then your experience is completely broken. You don't feel like being inside the metaverse. You just want to come back. Okay, so you need to have a, a very good network infrastructure. And right now we have companies like AT&T and Geo who are like working for 5G networks and those kind of things, right? And next is the hardware infrastructure. So if you want to access the metaverse, you need hardware, right? Like uh, the headset or it could be uh, AR glasses or any, any, any hardware. Now for those hardware, you need to have high performing processors. You need to have high capacity batteries and other various uh, components that are there. So uh that's another infrastructure so you need to have good infrastructure that is able to manufacture these processors batteries and small components so that's the first step of building a metaverse let's see what's the next step is so here is the software so once you have the infrastructure we need the software so we have companies like google and aws who are providing a software for cloud computing so that you don't have to do everything uh, locally and then we have softwares like Unreal and Unity Engine, which is meant for creating 3D content that goes inside the metaverse. And then we have platforms like Allspace and uh, VRChat. So these are like a virtual platforms wherein you can go meet your friends or you can uh, have your meetings and those kind of things. And last, we have the software for making avatars, which is Ready Player Me. Uh, there are other good uh, I, I, there are not other so many good um, software that create good avatars is what I can say. So my personal favorite is Ready Player Me. So you can use that software to create your avatars. Okay. And then the next part on top of that is the interface. So we have the infrastructure, we have the software. Now there has to be some way in which you can interact with the metaverse, right? And this is where the headsets and uh, other interface come into picture. So we have the VR interface, which is like Oculus, HTC Vive, and these kind of things. And then we have the AR glasses. So th this is another type of interface. You can interact with the metaverse. And then we have the uh, holographs. So this is also a way in which you can interact or is an interface towards the metaverse. And finally, we have the haptic gloves as well. Now, here there are companies like Apple, uh, Oculus, HTC, Google. So all these companies are providing us with these devices so that we can access the metaverse. 
All right. And on top of that comes economy. So if you think about it, nothing will sustain if you don't have a good uh, economic system around it, right? So right now, Metaverse is currently run by three major things. The first is the asset store. So everything that you see inside Metaverse is created by somebody. Uh, the assets are created by somebody, the image is created by somebody, the environment is created by somebody, the audio is created by somebody. So all these people who are creators for the metaverse, so th they are inside this economy. So they create and they give it to people who are creating metaverse and they are earning money from that. The second one is ads. So suppose if I'm a developer, I, I made a nice application, it could be a game or it could be some other any any application of my choice and then i spend some money uh, and i ask them to put it up inside the metaverse as ads now so now what this does is it uh, kinds of it kind of helps me as a developer to showcase that hey my app is available for you guys to try and experience it so it it has a wider reach to it and once people start uh, using my app and buying it i start getting revenue from that so that's that's another part of the revenue system and the third one is the service providers. So now any transaction that you do here uh, is not done through the actual internet banking or you cannot use your actual money. The whole concept of metaverse is based on decentralization, blockchain and those kind of things, right? So these service providers like uh, MetaMask and Uniswap, so they act as a service, financial service provider. So they help you with these transactions and in return they take certain small fees so that adds on to the metaverse economy as well all right and at the top we have the use cases so based on different use cases there are different metaverse so we have something called as decentral land so this is a place where you and your friends can go play games together you can collect different things and showcase it and then we have something called as horizon so this is a metaverse where it's more like uh, what can you say it's a collaborating metaverse like you and your colleagues can come together you can discuss few things you can have meetings presentations and those kind of things and finally we have the open sea so open sea is more like a platform not exactly a metaverse but it's connected to the metaverse so this is where people can go buy uh, they can buy sell or trade and uh, all their digital assets so that's done over here so now we know what a metaverse is, right? Like we just knew what metaverse is, but none of us knew what actually went into it. So now if you think about it, it's really vast and you can think uh, how much of resources is needed to create this one metaverse, right? Like you need infrastructure, like somebody's providing infrastructure, somebody's providing the softwares, then the interface economy, and finally we have the use case. So that's at the top. So it's not really easy to, you know, make a metaverse of your own is what I could say. And it's really cool that how fast it's evolving. Now it's time for a quick quiz on Metaverse. So let's go back to here and let's see. So Metaverse can be accessed only by AR and VR tech. Is it true or false? False, false, false. Yeah, that's right. So false is the right answer. It, we saw that it could be uh, accessed by other things like holograph or you can use your haptic gloves to access it. So yeah, that's not the only way. You can even access it from your PC. So Metaverse, uh, for example, Altspace, it's like you can access it from your uh, laptop or computer and you can access it from VR as well. The only difference is that uh, the experience. So it's more immersive when you're wearing VR and it's not so immersive when you're seeing it on a 2d surface so yeah that is what it is all right so which of the following describes the metaverse accurately it's a virtual world with uh, only with it's a virtual world that works only with 5g technology a virtual world meant exclusively for virtual reality gamers a virtual world where users can interact with each other so is it option a b or c Option C is what majority of you have taken. So let us check. Yeah, that's exactly right. So you don't need 5G technology. Right now we don't have 5G technology and still we are able to access the metaverse. And it's not meant only for virtual reality gamers because you can access metaverse through other 
devices like AR glasses or your PC as well. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation. Okay, so till now we saw what AR is, we saw what VR is, we saw what metaverse is, right? Now in the next step, we'll see what is the importance of AR for the metaverse. So we can use AR separately, we can have metaverse separately. But when you bring them together, AR technology has a certain degree of power that can convince your brain that those elements really exist in your environment. And that's exactly the same moment when you start realizing that the world becomes a lot more interesting. So what I mean is if you see this uh, image or a GIF that I placed here, imagine you're walking on the street and it's completely empty stores, people and all. And you wear your AR glasses and all of a sudden you see cool things like augmented over here. You can see that uh, what stores are selling you you can see about you can see about people you can see when the signal is going to turn on or turn green or red and when the vehicle is going to move and all these things you know so even though you cannot change the world that you're living in augmented reality makes it possible uh, to give you an extra dimension to the existing physical world that's there right so basically all you need to do is use images sounds text gps data and uh, with all these in place you can enrich the experience like you can enrich your uh, when you when you're already there so th that's what the importance of ar for metaverse is like uh, it, and one more important thing that we need to remember here is that the key element that that really matters is the uh, spatial effects so you need to make sure that the ar is placed uh, in in certain ways so that you can perceive depth for example if you see this person who, who is standing here uh, in black and there are arrows that is moving around and it goes under his shoes so that kind of makes us feel like okay the image is below him and we are sensing our depth over there right cool so now we know how uh, ar and metaverse will work together. Next, we'll see how the VR and metaverse will work together and what is the importance of it. So with VR, like you know, we can have like a fully immersive and uh, dynamic 3D environment. Like it, it's possible to do anything. So VR, it has the possibility to sub substantially change the way people visit to work or school or how they go to concert or go shopping. So with metaverse and VR headset, it's most likely that you're going to perform the same task that you do in real life, but from from the from your home. Like that's what you're going to do. Like you're going to go shopping for your avatars. You'll you'll buy a few clothes for it. You will have your own home, and you you can invite your friends over and all these things that are going to happen. So yeah, like I said, the importance of it is like uh, this has like the capability of changing the way we interact and we work. So you can meet virtually and you will feel as if your colleague is actually there in your room sitting next to you and it's a completely different experience. All right, so uh, let's move on to the next section, which is the live demo. So I'm going to show you guys uh, very quickly how you can create a AR application wherein you tap on the screen and the avatar is placed. It's like basically you need to scan your floor or any horizontal surface. So once it's scanned, uh, we'll have our avatar and then you can tap it and it'll get placed over there, right? So let's begin with that. Now there are certain prerequisites and um, I've already set it up. Uh, Manpreet, could you please uh, share the document with uh, the attendees who are there here? There we go, thank you Manpreet. <clears throat> So if you click on that link, it will just take you to uh, a Google uh, Docs. And in that, it's mentioned like what all the requirements you need. You need to have a Unity software. And then you need to have it set up. For example, if you go to File, Build Settings, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, so <clears throat> if you go to Build Settings, there's so many settings that you need to do to make sure <clears throat> it runs for AR. So all these requirements and the references are done. I'm not going to go through them right now. I'm directly going to jump in and show you how it's done, uh, how, how to make it, and uh, you can have a look at it. All right, so here you can see that uh, I have an empty scene, and uh, 
the first thing to do is to remove the main camera because we don't need the main camera we need something called as ar camera and that you'll get by right clicking here on the hierarchy window going to xr and clicking on ar session origin now here there's something called as ar camera okay so this is what we need it has a tag called main camera now you can see that it's positioned at some different coordinates we'll set it to zero it's not really required but it's good to start with uh, your AR camera starting at the origin. But again, it really does not matter. All right, so now that we have the uh, camera, next thing, there's another component that we need to add and that's called as AR session itself. This has something called as AR session and AR input manager. So the best thing about uh, developing with Unity is that uh, they have like certain integration like AR foundation and all. So they come with pre-existing components which you don't have to add so it's almost it's really simple all you need to do is just right click and select the component that you need That's exactly what we did here all right so we have the camera we have all the sessions that we need so that it runs perfectly fine now the next thing to do is to uh, have plane detection so somehow we want to scan the floor and when we scan the floor horizontal plane has to be detected now to do that, you can click on this add component and select something called as uh, AR plane manager. So this manager takes a plane prefab and detection mode, it can detect vertical or horizontal plane, anything that we choose. So now let's add the plane prefab, okay? Now to add a plane prefab, we need to create a game object first of the plane. So to create that, you can right click here go to XR and click on this AR default plane that's there. Now, when you click on this, you can see that it's already added the component that it needs, like the AR plane, AR plane mesh visualizer. So this basically helps you visualize what the mesh looks like, a collider, and then we have the renderer, and it has some materials attached to it, all right? Now, at this stage, it's called as a game object, okay? now. If I select here, it's asking me to add a plane prefab. So how do I convert a game object into a plane prefab? All you need to do is just select this and drag and drop it into your project window. So once you do it, it is converted into a prefabs. So prefabs are nothing but it, they're like pre-configured reusable game objects. So what I mean by pre-configured is you can see here it's pre-configured and once you drag and drop it here, it's here, right? So if, even if I delete from my scene, now when I drag and drop it, you see it's back. And it's reusable because I can keep dragging and dropping here. See how many other times I want. This never changes. So it becomes reusable. So that is what a prefab is, right? So uh, initially it's a game object. And then once you drag and drop it inside your project window, it becomes a prefab. And a prefab is something that you can uh, reuse any number of times you'd like. All right, now going back to AR session origin, we have the plane manager, we have the plane prefab, we, we'll drag and drop this in here. Next, we need to choose the detection mode. So do we want to scan vertical? No, we want to scan just the horizontal plane. So we'll remove this. So now our detection mode is set to horizontal. Perfect, so with this, we have finished the initial scene setup. So we have AR session origin, we have the camera, we have added AR plane detection. So now with so much, if you build and run the application and see how it would look like, then let us go back. So this is how it would look like. I mean, uh, the texture is slightly different. For us, it's gonna look orange in color, but generally this is how it would work. So you have your phone and you slowly go around scanning your area. The plane start getting detected and it'll, you know, uh, it'll keep showing you on your device. So how plane detection works is, uh, the AR code, the software that's there, it look for something called as feature points. So basically, for example, here we have a table which is brown in color and below that we have a floor which is white in color. So it's able to distinguish that these are two different features and it's able to generate the mesh on top of it. So that is how the plane detection is working. All right. So we have the AR plane manager, we have the plane prefab, we have the detection mode as horizontal. Then uh, next thing to do is to create the Ready Player Me avatar. So if you click on the link that we have given it to you, it will take you to this uh, website called Ready Player Me. 
you can uh, log in you'll have to first log in over here and then you can enter into your hub and you can create your own avatar i've already created mine so this is how i feel i look like but i'm not really sure uh, and yeah hold on yeah so here is my avatar so if if you already have if you are new then you can go ahead and go to my avatars and click on this and you you'll be able to create a new avatar but i have mine already so we'll go to the next one so uh, <clears throat> let us click on these three dots and there's something called as copy glb url so you can copy the url and we'll go back okay now uh, with ready play me avatar there has to be some way i can import my avatar into unity luckily they have given us a unity package and i have shared that to you as well through the link so once you open the link let us see over here it's going to take you to this google drive you can right click on it and say download once it's downloaded you can open the file select this and drag and drop this inside here like this okay inside your project window and uh, there's another window that pops up saying import unity package so here you will have uh, everything checked since i have already imported it for me it's not showing anything or generally these four will be checked you need to make sure that the newtons of json is unchecked because it's already there in your project now if you leave it at checked and if you click on import it's going to show you errors saying that it's already there so make sure you uncheck this yeah, uh, don't worry if you're uh, not able to follow or uh, not able to understand what's going on. I have sent you all the references. This is just like a demo to show you how quickly you can build an AR application. And uh, we have all the resources and it's uh, already shared to you in the Google Drive link, uh, Google Docs link that we have sent. All right. So, yeah, where was I? Yeah, we downloaded the SDK. So, once you download and import the SDK, on top here, you'll be able to see something called as Ready Play Me. You can click on that, click on Avatar Loader. And you remember we created an avatar and we copied the link, right? So let us select this and paste it here. And you can click on Load Avatar. And we'll give it a couple of seconds and we should be able to see my avatar here. There we go. So here you can see is my avatar. This right now is one is to one scale. So what it means is that this will actually be about our height if we were to run it, but we do not want that to happen. So let us get rid of this here. And if you go inside the avatars uh, folder, you will also have an avatars folder. So if you go inside this, you'll be able to find your avatar. You can drag and drop this. Okay. So it's a prefab. I'm dragging and dropping it in here. Now I want to configure it as per my wish. So I don't want to be one is to one scale. I want it to be somewhere like small, small avatar of mine. So I'll change it to 0.3, like in all the directions. Okay. There we go. Now, now my avatar looks pretty small. And then there's one more thing that you might notice. So if I make my, let's see, avatar here. You can see that it's facing away from the camera. I want it to face towards the camera. So I'll rotate it by 180 degrees, right? So now it is facing towards it. Let us put it back to zero. Okay, now the next thing that I need to do is I need to rename this. I'll name it as something like my avatar and drag and drop this back into this project folder. And you need to click on prefab variant because it's a variation of this prefab. So this prefab has a scale of one is to one is to one. Whereas my prefab variant, it has a different scale and it has a rotation to it as well. So once you have dragged and dropped this in here, it is a prefab now, you can get rid of this. We don't need it anymore in our scene. Okay. Yeah. So, so this kind of, with this, we are kind of set up our entire scene. Now the next thing is to, you know, somehow detect the plane. And once you detect the plane, uh, we need to have, like, you need to tap on your phone and it, the avatar has to get placed exactly there, right? Now that has to be done via scripting. So I have shared the script with you guys as well. It's called as uh, tap to play. So let us see, yeah, it's called tap to play script. So you can download the script. And <clears throat> once you have downloaded it, you can drag it and drop it inside the project window, okay? 
Now, um, uh, I'll explain to you how the script works so that you guys kind of get an idea of how scripting is done. So at the start, we have the libraries. So we need to declare all the libraries that we'll be using. So for example, uh, let us see here. So if I want to say input dot get touch now in order to use this API, uh, it's somewhere inside these libraries. So if I want to use the APIs for each of the variable that's there, then I need to have the libraries. So once I have the libraries, the next thing here is something called as required component of type AR Raycast Manager. So what it means is that if I want to use my AR tap to place component, I need to have the AR Raycast Manager assigned as well. So to give you a better understanding, I'll just go back to my uh, Unity. And here you can see I'll add a component called as AR Raycast Manager. And then I can drag and drop the script that I've written here. Okay. So now, now you see that uh, AR tap to place has something called as required component AR Raycast Manager, right? So now what I'll do is I'll remove this again. And if I directly drag and drop this in here, it automatically adds AR Raycast Manager. So this script is doing exactly the same. So it's saying that I require the AR Raycast Manager component. And if I add this script, this component gets added automatically as well. All right, because we want to use it in our script. That's why we are doing this. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we have declared our libraries. We have told what components we need. Then the next thing is to declare the variables that we'll be using inside the script. So the first variable is the avatar prefab. Now this avatar prefab is something that we created earlier, the first time that is, uh, where is it? If I go here, avatar. So yeah, this is my avatar prefab. So this variable will store this avatar prefab, right? And then we have something called as pond avatar. <clears throat> so what pond avatar does is, Later in the script here, we will be making a duplicate version of this prefab. So we'll be assigning the prefab to this variable and later on we'll be duplicating it so that even if we make any changes to it, it does not affect the original one. It's always the duplicate that gets changed. And then we have a variable called as AR Raycast Manager, which is nothing but it stores this component AR Raycast Manager. Then we have a variable called touch position, which stores the position of touch. So example, if I touch somewhere on my screen here, so it's able to detect the position and that value, the X and Y value gets stored inside this touch position variable. And uh, in the end, we have another variable called as hits. So uh, I'll talk about this later. Uh, we just carry forward and then I'll tell you why we use this variable. All right. Okay. Now here we have the first method. It's called as uh, private void awake. So this method is called for the first time when you run the application. So when the first time the application is run, it gets this component, AR Raycast Manager and stores it inside the variable. That's it. So it takes the component and stores it inside the variable. That's it. That's what it does. And the second function is called as the update function, second method. So update function is called uh, every single frame. So every time a new frame is there, this method is called. So what this method does is it checks if there is a touch. So input the touch count greater than zero. So what it means is that if only if I touch my phone uh, or touch my screen, only then I want this entire set of uh, uh, steps to get executed. So if I don't touch my phone, then these steps are completely skipped. So it does not get executed at all. Okay, so now if the input touch is greater than zero, greater than zero because I can touch like this, I can touch like this. So Th there's various way I can touch my phone, right? So if it is greater than zero, then I want to get the first touch. So the first touch, whichever is the first touch, I want to get that and store it into a variable called touch. So once I have that, I want to check if my touch face is equal to touch face dot begin. So what it means is if I get rid of this here, you can see that there are various enums. So if you're wondering what an enum is, it's basically like a predefined constant now their enums are used when we know all the possible values so here all the possible values are like began so when you touch it's your touch is begun when you remove it your touch is cancelled or when you uh, like completely remove it's ended and if you're touching and moving it means you're moved and if you're touching and keeping it there it is stationary so there are different different possible scenarios and we know what it is so 
we want to see when it is begun like when 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 i'm just touching like when you just touch so i want to check that particular uh, criteria so if that is met then i want to store my touch position in a variable called touch position all right so just a quick recap of what we have done here. So first thing is we are going to check if the touch count is more. If it is more, then we store the uh, that touch inside a variable called touch. Then we see if it is begun. So if the touch is begun, then we store the position inside touch position. All right. And once all this is done, next thing we want to do is we are going to use the AR Raycast Manager component and use its API method called Raycast. Now this needs three things. One is the screen point, the point in which I am touching. Then it needs a variable to store the hit results. So when the raycast goes and hits something, it generates some results. So there has to be some variable which can store these results. And finally, we need to uh, tell them what are we tracking? So what is the trackable type? So what raycast is basically is like when you touch something, right? Uh, it kind of shoots a raycast like a like a laser kind of a thing. It does not actually shoot a laser. I'm just explaining it. And it sees whatever it hits. So the line goes and hits something. And when it hits something, the result is stored. So the raycast will be shot from the touch position. So wherever I touch from there, we have a raycast shooting. And once it hits something, it stores all the information inside this variable and trackable type. So what are we tracking right now? So if I click on this dot, here you can see that am i tracking my face no am i tracking an image no what am i tracking i'm tracking a plane but what type of plane am i tracking am i tracking a plane with bounds am i tracking like plane with bounds is basically means a rectangular bounding box so that's not we are tracking are we tracking plane within infinity so what this means is that if we're trying to track a plane with respect to its position and orientation uh, but that is also not what we are doing we are tracking plane with polygons. So it's basically like a 2D convex shape. So that's what we are tracking. So we'll select plane with polygon. So if you remember this image, let me go back and show it to you. Uh, where is it? Oh, I lost it. Just a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so here you see that it's not a rectangular shape, right? It's, it's like a convex shape. So it keeps building up to it. So that is what it's meant by uh, trackable type with the uh, plane within polygon. Okay, so now if this is true, so if when I shoot my raycast, when I shoot my raycast from the touch position, if it hits a plane with polygon, then this set of code is uh, executed. So what is the what this set of code does is it uh, it it stores the first hit position. So imagine this. Imagine you have a table, you have a floor, and then you touch using your phone. Once you touch, there's a raycast which shoots right now. First, it hits the table, and then it hits your floor as well. So it's hitting two points. So we want the first point that it hits, which is the table. So that is what we are doing. So hit pose, it stores the first hit position uh, when you touch your screen. And now once we have the hit pose variable stored, we know what the position it's stored in. The next thing we want to do is we want to spawn the avatar. So when you open your application, you scan your floor, there's nothing, right? Your avatar has not yet been spawned. So the, for the first time, when, when we want the avatar to be spawned, that's when we do this. So if the avatar is null, that is when it's not there for the first time, we will instantiate the avatar avatar prefab. And where do we want to instantiate it? At the hit position. So wherever it has hit, in that position, we want to instantiate it. And what is the rotation that uh, that should that it should be taking? It should be taking the rotation of the prefab, like so that it, it is facing the camera. Now, in case you already have the avatar, so for the first time you touch, we have the avatar that's spawned over there. And the next time you touch somewhere, we just want to move its position. We don't want to create a duplicate version. So uh, you touch one place, it's spawned there. You touch somewhere, it just jumps to the next position. So to do that, it's done using this statement saying spawned avatar.transform.position 
is hit position dot position. So that's what this script does. Is. So to give you a small summary of what this script does is, it uh, it scans a plane uh, like a horizontal plane, and once it's scanned, you touch it, and if 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 it is a proper plane that you have scanned and finished touching, the avatar gets spawned. Once it's spawned, you touch somewhere else, it jumps to the next place. Right, so we have the script ready and all you need to do is drag and drop it in here. Then you need to add a avatar prefab that we have created that one as well. So you can drag and drop this in here and then you can go to file, uh, build settings and you can kill, click on build and run. If you click on that, it'll ask you to ask you for an APK name. You can give it something like uh, tap to place on and then click on save and it will start building and it will generate the application for you once you have built it it should look something like where did it go hold on yeah like this so when you tap for the first time it's there and then when you tap somewhere else it, it skips to the next position so that's that's how you make a uh, ar application now, this is like really small, simple demo. You can build it really quickly. And uh, it's pretty cool as well. Now, this is just my avatar. Uh, you guys should definitely check it out. Go to Ready Player Me, create your own avatar, download it, use Unity, C Sharp scripting. You have everything that you need. All you need to do is place the things correctly and hit build and run. That's it. And you will have your first cool application. You can go show it to your friends saying that, hey, see, I have a very cool application that I built, right? All right. So uh, do we, I think I'll hand it over back to Manpreet. Thanks, Ashre. The whole webinar was really amazing. And I'm sure we all got to learn a lot of new things. So now we'll be opening the floor to our audience for their questions. But before we start taking up their questions, I have a question for you. My question yeah. is that as somebody who is eagerly interested in learning more about this domain, what is the right path for me? And uh, I can see that a lot of people are also asking this question that what are the future prospects? So we would love to know that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I would like to tell you something from my personal experience. So I started off as a mechanical engineer and then I got into this space. So back then it was uh, kind of difficult for me because uh, uh, I had to learn C sharp from some source. I had to learn Unity from some other source and then I had to learn development and all these things. I really wished back then that uh, I, I wished that there was somebody who could you know, put all of these things together and give it as a package saying, hey, you start with uh, Unity, then you learn C sharp, then you can learn developing this, developing that. And uh, yeah, that's what uh, th that that would be the right steps. So the first step would be to you know learn Unity, and then you would learn how to code using C Sharp. Then you start learning AR and how to develop AR apps, and then you can learn VR and how to develop VR apps as well. So, but lucky for uh, all of you that we already have this package on Internshala, and uh, I think you can check it out. That's and, right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and with respect to the future prospect, uh, I can say that right now we are exactly at the beginning stage. Like, not many people know about it. So, uh, like, if you go and tell somebody that, hey, I work for AR and VR, they, they come and ask me, hey, what, wait, wait a second, what is that? So, it's at its nascent stage. So, this is the right time to go and kind of start exploring it because in next three, four years, it's going to blow up. And when it blows up, you're going to, you're going to reach great heights along with it as well. So that's what I feel. Definitely. And for all the keen learners here today, Internshala Trainings is offering a special 10% discount. So click on the link in description and use code practicals10 to enroll now for our ARVR training and 70 plus other practical based online trainings. So we can now open the floor to our audience. So I would request all of you to just type in your questions in the chat and Ashley, if you could take up a couple of questions from the chat. Yeah, sure. So for those of you who have joined from LinkedIn, uh, I think you will find the link in the video description.
So Unity is basically like uh, editing software. So the software that I used right now, it's like a uh, engine. So development engine. So you can create various uh, contents in Unity. So that's what it's used for. Oh, there's so many questions that are coming in. Uh, let's see, where do I start from? So what are the ways to get into this role of career? So there are different types of uh, ways that you can see. So it's not like you have to become a developer to get inside the XR and uh, XR community. It's like uh, you can either be, uh, you know, a 3D artist as well. You know how to develop models and then uh, you know how to do proper lighting and those kind of things. So even for AR and VR, you need models, right? there are some differences like for example if you're developing a mobile application uh, your models cannot have cannot have like a lot of polygons because then your phone will start hanging and things like that so if you are somebody who is a 3d artist then you need to know how to how, how can how to create good models for ar and vr and that's one way to get in and the second one is definitely through developing if you are a developer then yeah that's how you can get into So you need to know C sharp program. The, actually, the thing is for you to start with XR, there are two ways. One is uh, you can know C++ and uh, Unreal Engine and C sharp and Unity. Now, the, the difference between Unreal Engine and Unity Engine is that Unity Engine has like a huge community. So if you get stuck anywhere, you just Google your problem and you get solutions already because a lot of people who are using it, a lot of developers who are using it, so they know the solution to it. Unreal is uh, not that great because uh, if you get stuck somewhere, then the help and support is not that much. But it's but in terms of visuals, definitely Unreal is better. You can make better looking visual games than Unity. And yeah, so you need to know coding to make small things. So for example, for example, like we saw, if you are making an AR app and you want to tap something, it's not like somebody has pre-written the code for you to make it work. So you as a developer need to know how to code and make things work. So suppose I want to make my avatar instead of jumping, I want to make him walk. Then it's my job as a developer to write a code which will make sure that when I tap, he should walk in such a direction. So, so these, these kind of things that are there. All right. So Ashri, I think that would be all since we are short on time. Thank you so much for answering all these questions and for the awesome webinar and for all of you thank you so much for joining and don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends do subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to never miss another update regarding our upcoming events you can also join our telegram channel and get updates regarding our events there the link is in the description and uh, we'll see you guys soon bye ये क्या हाल बना रखा है इंजीनियरिंग तो पढ़ ली लेकिन प्रैक्टिकल नहीं सीखे करता कुछ हूँ होता कुछ और है भाई इस बार ना मेरा फेल होना पक्का है ऐसी पढ़ाई का क्या मतलब जिसमें हो नो प्रैक्टिकल्स चुपचाप जाओ इंटर्नशाला ट्रेनिंग पे यहाँ है थ्री डी प्रिंटिंग रियल एस आई वेब एंड एप डेवलपमेंट प्रैक्टिकल लर्निंग वाली ट्रेनिंग ट्रेनिंग सेलेक्ट करो और थ्योरी के साथ प्रैक्टिकल भी सीखो इंटर्नशाला ट्रेनिंग शुरुआत यहीं से